All right, so there was some talk yesterday about how to save hands on the new, um, this is the new version, version three of BridgeBase Online. Um, here's the home screen. And uh, over on the far right is the account. If you go over to account, you can find, that's where you'll find deal archive. All right, so that's, we're going to come back to that. Um, Put it on history for right now. So I'm entered in the um, the oops in the uh, day long. Oh, there it is, the day long uh, robot tournament for the ACBL, and it means you can play it all day long, twelve boards. I like it because sometimes you only have time for one, and lots and lots of people play it. Um, so let's let's go through a hand and then and then save it. Uh, north uh, opens three hearts. Uh, I have, so we have 11 hearts. Uh, what do you call an 11 card suit? Um, we call it the Trump suit. Um, so I'm going to bid four hearts. I wouldn't be surprised to see them go to five here, though. Yeah, they went to four. So now we got a choice to whether bid five over four. And generally speaking, it's not a good thing. But I have the ace of spades. And there's a chance that the king of spades is in east, in which case they have two spade tricks. But you know, I don't think that we're going to get. Um, I don't think they're going to have any hearts. <laughs> I think there's a really good chance that uh, uh, there too. So, we, and my partner doesn't have much. It's, so it certainly looks like we're going to go down in five hearts, but we're not vulnerable. So let's see what happens. I only, I'm only seeing a couple tricks in spades, so they should be making 420. They double, and now we really need to not go down a bunch. So they have the Ace of Hearts too, look at that. So doubled down here uh, uh, is 100, 300, 500. Now we can go down too. We can, if they've got spades, we can, we're can. we okay with one and three, um, which means we would have to take nine tricks. But if they've got, uh, but if they go one more, then they're gonna do better than they would have gotten in the game. So my target here is how do I take nine tricks? Um, Got a good lead, right? That's, that's going to be two club tricks. And then if the king of spades is in the right place, that's a good one too. And then um, with any luck at all, we're going to pull, well, we're only going to lose one hard trick, right? The, uh, the ace of hearts. So let's get rid of the trump tricks just so that we don't have to deal. Look at that. We got two club tricks up there now. Um, I'm going to play a heart first just because. There's the jack, and they were split. We'll get the ace. Okay, so now that's all the heart losers we have. They lead the diamond. They got the ace of diamonds. And in theory, that gives us a trick right there. Now we don't even need to take the spade finesse, right? Because we can simply play the 10. Um, Because because uh, it's early morning and I want to make sure, okay. and I can play uh, the queen and throw away with two of spades. Play the seven of spades over to the ace, and play the king of diamonds. Play the ten of spades. All right, and then I can claim. Now let's say that I I I'm really happy with this hand. Obviously, um, we don't get to see a score immediately, but. Uh, my score for just making the heart game was going to be 420, but now I'm instead I have managed to make 650. Their score for a game would have been 420, and uh, and we made 650. So it turned out to be a good bid. Um, uh, the ace queen of spades was exactly like I thought, right? Based on the bidding, so I knew I was getting the ace queen. Could they have made four spades? Uh, tomorrow I'll look when we see the hands. Um, and we'll see if any where people played this. But in any event, right now I like the hand. I want to save it. All right. So I go over to the history side. Right? And I look for export. And then I get save deal as. And what pops over on the other side of the screen, right, is save deal as. Right? And, and this is where I might... Um, I might make a note as to what I'm going to call it, just so that I have some hint of what it was about. And I'm just going to say here, go to five. 
group would go to five hearts, just so I remember what it's all about. And then I'm going to decide where I was going to put it. Now, um, one of the things that we used on this, right, was um, uh, was discarding um, on that on that uh, when we got the club lead. Right? So there was some issues there regarding a finesse. You know, should we take that? The spade finesse. Well, it turns out I didn't even need to because they gave us a pitch. So I think this is about pitching losers. That's what we're going to call it, pitching losers. So I look for that that folder. Now see here, I have all these techniques: right? unblocking, roughing losers, avoidance, counting, cross rough, discard losers. Right, and all I do is just click on it, and the uh, deal goes directly there. All right, so. That's saved. Now let's say that I want to check, let's say that uh, I want to practice some later on. I'll come back to that one. I think I'm off to a good start in that tournament. Um, I go to practice tables, and we got three types. First of all, Bridge Master, which everybody should play as, and continue playing forever because they all have world class deals. It doesn't hurt to practice those over and over again. And then we have a bidding table. The bidding table is really fun. Um, and we would use it, uh, for instance, uh, with one-on-one -on -one teaching or teaching a partnership. We set up, or when you're working on a partnership, you, know, you set up a bidding table and you can kind of control what type of deals you get and you practice bidding. You bid 100, bid 100 hands, you know, in a few hours, and uh, which would take, you know, a long, long time to do in real life with a real set of cards. The bidding table is fabulous, but you also have the teaching table. So... You set up a teaching table by just going that. I usually click invisible because you know you're not really you're doing it for yourself, you know. And, and if if you're popular, you know people start dropping by and and watching. So you can click on invisible, and then start table. Usually goes in the main bridge club. It really doesn't matter what club it's in because you're invisible. Nobody can see you. And then let's say and then you know what I do is I sit one thing and. And as you've seen in class, you know, I'm usually north or south because most of the hands we have saved are from robot tournaments where I'm sitting either north or south. So now I can make random hands if I want here. But for practice, for, for reviewing our mistakes, the best thing to do is to go over to account and find your fail folder. Right? Now, you, you create folders by hitting the plus sign. Okay? And then you can type in a name. Um, let's see, like a test file, we'll just call it for now, or test folder. Okay, so you get a new folder, right? Um, you got to check it, and then it's down there someplace on the test folder. But for today, I'm just going to use fail folder, and. Uh, For some reason, there is. I must have cleaned out the fail folder. That rarely happens. Um, interesting. There, wait. They just took. There were so many of them. It took a while. There, I couldn't leave it cleared them up because there's usually a hundred of them in here. These are all hands I screwed up. I'm not too proud to say that. So what I want to do is I want to click on this one. It's just a hand I I screwed up. And I want to, first I check and see which way I'm playing it, right, to make sure I'm in the right seat. I'm in south, that's cool. Then you go to the little three bar thing, you go to export, and you do upload deal to table. And now it moves over there. And now you get your second chance to play it. Now, I don't particularly like to play it double dummy. A lot of times, this is, you know, these have been sitting here a little bit, and I actually don't remember what they're about. So what I like to do is go to teaching options. And you've noticed probably in class that we do all these hands closed hand. I do this every time we do it. And I click off that little button there. Now if you sit in two seats, you'll end up seeing all the hands. You sit in one seat, you only see your own hand. And then I bid it again. So you know, 9, 12, 14, 15, 17. And uh, thinking about whether I want, what's my convenient rebid. Um, 17, do I want to bid three spades? Probably. So I'll go ahead and bid one spade and three spades here. 
which will get us to four clubs, which is shows a fit in spades, and at least two spades. Um, so he's got a club. He's got the king of clubs and the ace of clubs. And uh, he's got some interest in slam. He's got 10 points, but I only have 17. I'm just going to bid four spades. I don't think that's worth going any higher. don't really have anything to bid for the robot either. Okay, so we have six spades if they break evenly. Um, uh, if they break, break three two, we should have no spade losers. Um, we have a heart winner up here, but I'm not sure. Oh, we played this hand in class. I remember it. Um, we got these club losers. I I think that I this is a hand that we played already. I remembered that. What I wanted to do with this is I wanted to immediately get rid of a loser in diamonds. And then uh, let's check and see how those things split. They split well. And they did. Now we have no spade losers. And my main, there goes a club. I'm watching these discards, right? I have six, six clubs missing the ace 10. All right, so he's 10, so we lead up there. What I'm hoping is the 10 falls in the in these three leads here. He should be in west. Okay, so that's eight, nine with their discard, and look at that, they led back a diamond to me, the club to me. And the, only the 10 is missing, it drops, and now we get that trick. Okay, so now I think to myself, oh, well, I played that extraordinarily well. I'm only losing two, right, because I'm going to lose the diamond. Um, what did I do wrong? So, like, I'll pull this hand over and I'll say, well, let's see what happened when I screwed it up. So this is the time I screwed it up. They led the ace of clubs. That's cool. And then they led the ace of diamonds. And a diamond. So I didn't never got to pitch a diamond. This may have been defense here that kept me from making five tricks. Right. They made a different lead at the table for me, and I was able to um, pitch on the ace of hearts. So I think, well, so I didn't do so badly. Did I screw anything else up? Um, no, I didn't. Was, uh, Well, I guess I did. I guess I did. He didn't pull the trump off. Well, he roughed high or something, so I screwed up. He shouldn't be taking that trick. What happened there? Let me back up and take a look. Oh. So I played the ace of spades. King of spades. And uh, I roughed with the ace of spades. That was the problem on the diamond trick. So I, that was screwy. I shouldn't have roughed with the high spade in the deck. I was clearly worried about something that was unnecessary. So now I know I, I messed it up, right? They made a good lead. I was never going to be able to pitch a diamond like I did here on when I replayed it. But I certainly should have roughed low here. Then I could have pulled all the trump and not given up a setting trump, right? Because what happens, I roughed high. And now he's going to end up with the high spade. So that was like a bonehead mistake, right? What was I thinking? I got paranoid about diamond, a diamond rough, so I roughed high. Sigh. Okay, so now that I know how I screwed that up, um, now that I, I can't see of a good reason for for keeping this hand. So I just go over here to the, to the little trash can and kill it. And the weird thing about it, you have to trust that you did it, especially if you haven't titled it. You can't see that the title changed because so many of these are untitled deals. Um, you got to trust that it changed. But if you want to make sure this is a new deal, you can do that.
And this is a really good way to spend your time rather than just flipping cards, is to go back and review your mistakes and see what you could have done better. And I did something pretty good on this, on this replay here, where I, right, if you remember where I played that Ace of Hearts. So let's say that I'm thinking, eh, that was pretty clever, Hugger. Um, um, of course, i got to claim it first. Got to give him one. So it shows up in history, which is a tab over here, history, right? And I'm, and it's down here where you can see it. And you can think, well, uh, was that a deal that I'd like to say? Um, and it looks like anything but a diamond lead, you can make five, so long as you are willing to pitch a diamond by overtaking the ace of hearts. It was not a hand we had in, in class. Um, so um, I think, well, that might be fun because because we're you know it's basically about pitching a loser on a winner. So I'm going to go to export, save deal as, and I'll find pitching a loser. Right, where was that? Nothing finesse. It squeezes discard losers. Right, probably should have named it something. But now it's over in that folder, and I can review it again when I'm looking for hands to use as teaching hands. So that's basically the whole thing about how to use um, use the uh, new version of this thing and use a teaching table. Uh, how to practice your hands, how to sit, how to save screw ups or save good hands and sort them, and and, uh, um, and all those now are found under account in the deal archive. Right? These are all my folders. You can see I have lots of them. Uh, like this one. This is, I took Anderson's, Ron Anderson's book on Levensaw and copied and built every single hand in the Levensaw book. Right? Every single hand. So now I can teach this, all right, or I can practice it, or if I have a partner that wants to play Levensaw with me, I can show them how we play, all right? And I've got uh, all of these hands to, sh to, um, to show. Sometimes I will uh, save an entire game. Like, look here, uh, the common game, which is a really cool thing. If you're a club player, you've probably heard of it. Um, you can actually download all the hands from a, from a club game, right? So that's what this is, and this is the Muskegon game. I usually put a date on it. And then that way I can go back and review the entire hand, you know, the entire game if I want to, and see where we screwed up. And I often find hands there as well. Here's new minor forcing. These are new minor forcing hands I just saved, right? so I could teach that. Um, here are some next step things that I did the first time around. Um, here's our all the hands from our first five weeks. Anyways, you get the idea. Reading the cards. This is a Larry Cohen book. Right? Built all the hands. Right? Here's an one by uh, Terence Reeves, one of the great, great writers. And this is 20 hands on elimination play. And believe me, that is really fun to do. Anyways, if you're interested, um, if you have any more questions, leave them in, in, the, uh, in the comments. Uh, if you like what uh, you're seeing, uh, subscribe. I do do online private lessons for beginners and uh, new intermediates um, um, to get you started and uh, rank up that game a little bit. Um, let me know. Thanks.